Are you tired of being a victim when you land, having some random jump master take you to some random place, not get a gun when you land, and then die immediately all just to leave the game, requeue, and do it over again? Or maybe you're tired of the Skull Town drops and you just want a little bit more of a peaceful place to land with good loot still, maybe decent fighting opportunities, and then be able to make your way to the mid and late game. This video is for you. This is going to give even newer players in Apex Legends an overview of every single high tier, medium tier and low tier loot zone in the game and it's going to give you the best locations to land if you want a chance of success and also we're going to mention where to rotate from these locations as well listen being on your home turf is one of the most important things in a br if you know the map better than the player you're facing you're probably going to win that duel and of course all loot zones are not created equal so i will be ranking them as well as explaining them so you know my personal preference as to the places i like to land the most to get geared up get a good fight and and then head into the late game feeling confident with some swag. Now there are two distinct things that you need to know that change every single game. One is the hot drop, the hot zone so to speak, and that can appear anywhere. That will mean that you have a higher chance of finding fully kitted weapons, legendary items in that zone, and that constantly rotates. You'll see it as a big blue circle on the map. The other thing that will constantly change is the ship, and we're gonna talk about the ship now because the ship is one of the first places I tried to land all the time in Apex Legends. Legends. So ship, let's talk about ship. Landing ship is one of the most common things I think newer players try to do. It looks really fun. It catches your eye. You see this thing moving. You're like, yeah, let me land on the ship. You land on the ship. There is a lot of high value loot, but the problem is it's sparse. So I would do this with a grain of salt. I rank it as a relatively low landing spot because of course, although good loot, there's not enough for a full team to get kitted and it's usually very competitive. There's two tiers of uh, looting on this ship. The top tier towards the edges usually contain very good guns and armor towards the bottom side of the middle part of the ship there's also a gun usually with some ammo and inside the ship in both ends of the corridors there are usually really strong items like uh, guns like a devotion with energy ammo maybe even uh, a high level body shield you can find all kinds of good things on the ship but after you've basically landed with two or three teams that loot will be gone in second I'd land ship with a grain of salt know that if you don't get a weapon fast just jump off there's no fall damage try to loot on the bottom I've had teams pursue me but you can usually get away although it doesn't set you up for a great game. Ship is pretty risky, so I wouldn't recommend doing it, although there is good loot there. Unless you know you can be by yourself, there's not enough loot for your whole team, and it could be very, very dangerous at the start of a game. Now, newer players may not realize this, but there are two phases to ship. There is the movement part of the ship, where it's flying in the sky, and there is also the landed part of the ship, and you will see the landing location where the ship is going to go on the map as well. Once you land, there will be zip lines that connect to the ground, and if the ship is unlooted, you could actually take it up and try to loot that ship but usually towards late game the ship has been looted already the first area we're going to cover outside of ship is water treatment water treatment is one of the high tier loot zones towards the south side of the map on apex legends now like many high tier loot zones water treatment has a ton of loot there are a ton of bins outside and inside upstairs and downstairs in corridors that all have very good loot the only issue with this is that sometimes you can get caught out into the open so when you're looting i like to stay inside at first and maintain high ground it's one of the core principles of looting in my opinion stay high ground to start and move low ground once you know that no one else is above you or you've cleared your low ground so you know that you're not going to run into an enemy without a gun in my opinion water treatment ranks extremely high as far as the value of the loot the amount of the loot and the open space meaning that if you are not with your team you're all doing separate looting you have time to get shot and maybe restabilize disengage and get to a safer part of the map because you're not so up in each other's face a water treatment landing doesn't necessarily necessarily put you in the thick of things so if you're a super aggressive player this may not be the spot for you but if you like to get some good guns some good armor and then go out and fight water treatment is a slow play that might work for you the most common rotations are to either repulsor market or thunderdome slash skull town you'll often catch players who land in thunderdome rotating the skull towns so or there may be some fighting that way but water treatment essentially is just a slow play high tier loot landing and that might be exactly what you're looking for speaking of thunderdome let's get into that. Thunderdome is a great location with more open space on the southwest side of the map. As you'll see here, I like to glide onto the top of the very highest point in Thunderdome so I get a vantage point on where everybody else is and I know where to drop safely. There are boxes to the right and to the left, and by boxes I just mean kind of buildings that look like large cages uh, that have loot under them, in them, and sometimes above them, so be careful to look for all of those places. As you head towards Skulltown though, there will be a 
few more cages distinctly that hold usually very high level gear, but the thing about Thunderdome is you are exposed. It's a dangerous spot to loot and get caught out in the open because people get good guns and essentially it's a bull, right? People will shoot you and they will take you down if you have a lot of competition. Overall, if you know a lot of people are going to Skull Town and you drop Thunderdome, it's a great spot to get geared up quickly and then very fast maneuver your way into the backside of Skull Town as you approach from the south heading into the north. Now we're going to get into Skull Town in just a second, but my last thought on Thunderdome to help you out is to be prepared. Don't find yourself in open spaces here. Like I said, it's a very bull shape. People will look down on you and they will be able to look at you with very little cover. So that's why I like to take the high ground and I like to rotate into Skull Town before anyone at Skull Town finishes their fights and tries to rotate onto me. Now let's talk about Skull Town, basically the tilted towers of Apex Legends. Skull Town has a very specific landing location that I like to use and it is the rooftops of the highest buildings in Skull Town. Now the way I like to think about Skull Town is big building or the small market runs. Now there are four different market runs that go four different directions. They're all equidistant from each other around the big building that goes all the way to the top of the town. What I like to do is actually land on the big building. That way I get a gun. There's usually body armor, gun, ammo on that building. You can check both different sides of the rooftop. You could actually play the rooftop and then I check below me. I go to all sides and see if I can hear or see anybody else. Once I do that, I can not only tell my teammates where they are, I could drop down and maybe get the first shot on them because most people aren't expecting damage from above. Now what's interesting about Skull Town is although the fights are great, the momentum from winning a fight at Skull Town can carry you to a victory throughout the game because it's usually very popular. It is a mid-tier loot zone, so more often than not, you will have moments in Skull Town where you don't get that great weapon. You get a little something and you have to manage this fight maneuvering through the market runs, maybe disengaging all the way towards market. If you are the team that comes out of Skull Town, you not only will have probably half the lobby dead already, but you will probably be in a great position to go ahead and take this W. Now, if you do finish Skull Town, now you're looted or you want to go search for some more fights, the most common rotation areas are Market and Thunderdome. Thunderdome is used just to clear out that space behind you and really only if you hear shots or you need some more loot, it's a safe route to take. Probably you're not going to run into a lot of players that way, but usually you head back and you go towards Market. Market has several caves that lead into bridges in the Bridge Valley, the Cascades, areas like that where there's almost guaranteed to be fighting or some type of scouting information available for you. And so that's where you commonly will go after Skull Town. So let's talk about Market. Market is one of my favorite landing locations and I actually spent multiple days only landing at Market, learning the ins and outs of it. If you're a CS player, this is actually probably a great area for you because there are a lot of long corridors and angles to try to hold within rooms that put you into literally face-to-face -face combat with your enemies. Now, some people like to land at the front of Market and use the doors to just go through at ground level and clear it all out. I like to land on top of Market and go through the ceiling. This gives me high ground for most of my time in Market and I can get good visuals on if there are enemies and where they are approaching us from. I also like to move to high ground as soon as possible. I used to start looting some of the corners, but the problem is when you loot those corners, you put yourself in a low ground position. If there is a team, they will be able to take advantage of you. There's literally no way to run. You have to try to wall climb up out of danger. So I loot the big rooms first. And if you can do that, you actually usually get more gear. There's usually body shields there and you're almost guaranteed to find at least one weapon, whereas the corners have uh, more sporadic loot. Now, Market is a mid-tier loot zone that feels like a low-tier loot zone. I don't know what it is, but I just don't feel confident gearing up my entire team in Market, especially if another team lands with you. If you have to split this loot, it may be mid-tier, but there's just not enough of it to go around for six players to all feel good. You might get the short end of the stick, or they might, but that's a risk you need to be willing to take when you land Market. Good thing for you, though, is there are a few disengage points, and there is some extra loot right outside. If you go outside, there are some buildings that if you head towards Skull Down, you can just keep looting on the way, or you can actually go to an east settlement, which is directly to the east of Market, where there are a few buildings, a few bins. You can get some high ground POVs and maybe chase down an enemy who's disengaged there or disengage yourself. Also, fun fact, a lot of guides have Market as a low-tier loot zone, and I did originally, but I checked in-game, and it's actually a mid-tier loot zone, so I'm glad I found that correction myself. I don't know why a lot of guides say that, but in-game, it is definitely saying mid-tier loot.
All right, now it's time to move into one of my other high tier loot, highest recommended places to land in Apex Legends, Artillery. Now, Artillery is one of the best spots to land, in my opinion, if you have a solo game. There's wide amounts of loot. The looting paths are very simple. There's a lot of ways to run away from opponents, and there's also a ton of ways to engage in fights that are spread out that give you chances to regroup, disengage when necessary, and push enemies when they're down. Also, there's a respawn beacon there. Teams that do come out of Artillery are nearly fully kitted, and there's just a ton of different things that I think allow this place to be a very flexible and very good loot zone for players who want a different looting experience than their traditional one that's high chaos. Now, my favorite tip to give about artillery is that although most people loot east to west in the underground warehouses in between the guns, what I would love to tell you guys about is an area right outside of artillery called Two Pines. There's actually a little house there, and you can also climb the fence and find a, a deployed ship with a couple of bins next to it with some decent gear. If you just get bum rushed, you have no opportunity to get into a fight or feel safe, you could actually head over to that area. And there's even a redeploy balloon or one of those hot air balloons that you could take and get out if things get truly, truly bad. One of the best things about artillery though, in my opinion, is the flexibility of where you can loot. You could loot there back in Two Pines. You can loot in between the, the warehouses. You can go into the cavern and start connecting your way back towards the center of the map. Or you can also loot towards the top end of artillery, which is something I don't see a lot of players do. The most common rotation I've done is basically going from the artillery underpass into Watchtower North, which is a great place to get some more high tier loot if you do need it. Players may follow you, but there's a lot of ways to wiggle around, go under, go high, go into these buildings to avoid getting caught out in this area. This area also has a few zip lines that lead into Cascades, which makes it a great place to rotate if you heard shots in that direction. Artillery has great loot. It's got really easy fights to disengage from and really great rotation spots into pop popular areas of the map like Cascade, so I'd rank it very high on this list. Now, moving into the rotation spot I just mentioned, Cascades. This is a mid-tier loot zone that I find to be a very valuable place to go because there are not only certain buildings you can play around very nicely, there are a lot of rocks, there are a few trucks out there, and there's also another half of Cascades closest to artillery that's more of a swampy zone. So you have to kind of pick your side, but even if you see enemies across the way, you're not either usually in danger of one another unless you have a Kraber or some incredibly accurate triple take slash longbow skills. However, there is a huge caveat that makes me rank Cascades relatively low on this list. It's not a place I'd recommend landing often because you can get pincered extremely easily from rotations from artillery, from rotations from bridges, and also rotations from bunker. Bunker is one of the more common rotations that will mess you up if you are from artillery, and there's just no way to get around all of those people kind of converging into the center. You are essentially in the middle of where nearly four high tier loot zones are going to converge. Now, I don't recommend it as a great spot to land, but I do recommend it as a good spot to rotate to after you've landed at the aforementioned areas. Now, nearly every area on the outskirts of the map in Apex Legends is a high tier loot zone, but there are a few locations that break that rule, and one of them is Slum Lakes. Slum Lakes is a mid tier location that will rotate into Cascades or the Pit to pick up some extra loot on the way. They'll probably run into some players who landed at Runoff or are in Bunker and have decided to head towards Airbase or from Airbase heading towards Bunker if they cut through the Pit and head that way. One of the best things about Slum Lakes is it's just extremely to the name. It really does feel like a slum, but in that regard as well, it feels very complicated to get out. I have no doubt there's a ton of loot in Slum Lakes just because of the sheer size of the location, but there's so many ups and downs. There's a big pipe section that runs through the entire map, and if you're a Bangalore with smoke, you can maneuver the heck out of this. I had a 2v2 fight with one of my buddies, and we just could not keep up with this Bangalore who just kept hiding and rezzing and hiding around corners. So it is a good spot for fights if you have a character who likes to disengage, but high ground is even more key, not only because high ground is just easier in fights, but it gives you the visual information that a lot of times is obfuscated here in Slum Lakes, you like the word. The east side is also a little known fact, a little bit higher elevated than the west side. So if you start east, you can actually see down west a little bit easier than if you're west, seeing slightly up towards east. There's a strong bridge that has good loot on it that connects both sides of Slum Lakes. It's a decent place to rotate into Pit, and I think that's the next thing we should talk about here in this video. Now, Pit is a very precarious landing situation. If you go by yourself, it's great, 
and let me take that back it's average sometimes it's got great loot but the loot is not a plenty there's not as much as you would have liked but it is a great spot to go to after you've been somewhere else usually pit is not a place people land it is not a very high traffic area unless it is a hot zone uh, but if you do happen to land with another team there it is a freaking free-for-all there is gonna be bloodshed guarantee they're gonna try to run but there are too many good guns there if you do grab one that somebody is gonna go down so it's a very very risky play but it's a great place to rotate through from slum lakes it's also a great place to go if you know you are the only team going there I mean would you expect anything else from a pit seriously I mean it's, it's literally just a circle so you know it's not not a lot of hiding going on there now to move into some more high tier loot zones towards the northeast we have relay relay is one of the interesting locations where you'll see a lot of clips of people falling into waterfalls this is an area that has high tier loot and is relatively open with very little buildings one of the interesting things about it though is that I don't find a lot of action here I find maybe a team or two lands with me I've never really seen two three four five teams land here despite it having very good loot but I will say that the fights are very fun sporadic and they can uh, be taken over many different areas it's pretty isolated to the people that land there so you will not really be faced by a lot of teams rotating to you unless they loot artillery super fast or loot wetland super fast and then head back your direction one of the most common rotations is from relay into wetland which is a mid-tier loot zone in between Relay and Swamps. Relay is actually a slower paced place to fight and it's also your team versus whoever lands there. Not a lot of rotations like if you're in Cascades or in Bridges from other places on the map. So I actually really recommend it. I like it a lot. Now Wetlands is pretty meh of a looting location but that's what makes it kind of good. It's not very popular. Sometimes you'll run across some great epic gear and it's also usually a, a big enough to give you a building to a teammate. So you do not have to kind of scrounge for loot which if you want to slow play it but you don't want maybe the chances of a high artillery fight if people do land there you could switch to wetlands and still have plenty of room for every player to loot and do their own thing the most common thing to worry about is people rotating from relay but if you have some time you could even go up to relay yourself a lot of the common rotations from wetlands will head towards the middle of the map into cascades and maybe even below into swamps if it looks like the circle is heading south Ooh, it's time to get into swamps swamps is one of the more fun places to land because the difference it provides as far as an experience for most Apex Legends locations. Swamps is a very spread out zip line traversed swampy area that allows you to basically go from building to building but if you fall into the ground you are very exposed uh, what people may or may not know is that sliding in water or mud or anything like that will not really work the way it will on solid ground so you're going to be slower in general in terms of moving so you're gonna have to be a little bit more patient with how you get around playing swamps with my buddies there's a lot of times you can get caught off guard by someone who just gets a weapon bum rushes you and everyone's pretty isolated so I would say that getting some range here getting some high ground and making sure that people don't get too far away from one another is a good way to play around swamps I like to actually have a long range weapon here because a lot of times the fights are just you just can't push somebody you can't slide run and be quick enough to push them you have to try and take the shot from range until you know they're healing and you know that's going to be it once you decide to go over there the only thing I want to mention about swamps to finish it up is that it's a great place to rotate north west or south you have a lot of great towns to run into you can go to relay or wetlands north you can go in towards bridges towards the center of the fight uh towards the west and you can also go down to the south southwest towards hydro dam or even repulsor so swamps is actually a really good spot it's one of my favorite places to loot when i actually loot there i don't do it very often but i would rank it very high as a great spot to land in apex speaking of rotations it's time to talk about repulsor and hydro dam now i consider both of these to be connected because they are essentially connected connected they are by two very long pathways that arc from repulsor down towards hydro dam repulsor is a high tier loot zone but hydro dam is basically a low tier loot zone although it is spread out enough to where there's plenty of loot for people there's not the most insane loot that you'll find here maybe a crappy gun or two you'll definitely get some body shields but you're not going to get anything that blows you out of the water repulsor however has some very strong loot and that is a place that i think you want to land if you can 
can. It's towards the edge of the map. It provides a lot of opportunity for sneaky plays. It has the same kind of underground warehouses that artillery has, so you'll be familiar with how to loot those. Now, when you finish looting Repulsor, one of the common rotations is Watchtower South. Remember when we were coming from artillery, there was Watchtower North. This is Watchtower South. You get some extra loot, you get high ground onto a place called the River's End. This is basically the area uh, that's right below market, right above water treatment, and it's basically where Repulsor and those who go to Artillery South have a perfect vantage point on to clean up any fights or kills that are happening in that area. Considering the high tier loot, the zip line access to get from one side of Watchtower South all the way to the other side towards Bridges and Market, uh, I think Repulsor is one of the strongest places to loot and then rotate from in order to get engaged, get aggressive, get in some momentum in Apex Legends. Now we've got a few more places and my favorite place to land coming up to finish off this video, but just want to appreciate everybody who's been watching. Hopefully you've learned something here. And if not, hopefully it was just cool gameplay and past like, you know, 20, 20 something minutes in your day. Either way, let's talk about Air Base. This is one of the places that I like to land quite often because there are usually enemies who land here as well. Usually a lot of action, good fights, and great gear. A thing to be cautious about in Air Base is they force a lot of these fights to be out in open space near the runways because that's where a lot of the loot is. So be wary. You may have to take some fights from distance. If you see that sniper early, but usually like running close range, maybe hold on to it at airbase because you never know who's going to be shooting at you from afar or above. The thing that's nice about airbase as well is the rotation potential up towards runoff to another high tier loot zone, even a little farther up towards pit or towards the east right into bunker where a lot of people like to land and you usually can be on the scent of a couple of teams who have just passed there. Now, of course, airbase is a great spot to maneuver around in fights. They will be longer fights as long as you pace them out a little bit longer and don't get too aggressive. So if you want to have a team land here, there's a good chance you get looted. There's a good chance you'll have a good fight and a good chance to win as long as you play it right. Now, moving on to Bunker, which is a common place to rotate to from Air Base, you're going to see that I don't really like Bunker. It is a mid-tier loot zone, but the problem is it is super, super crowded. A lot of people land bunker for no reason and also it's it's a corridor. It's it's really like three loot boxes and then a huge corridor that goes from bunker all the way down towards basically the cascades area or all the way up towards you know essentially airbase and it is not a fun thing to be caught in the middle or to be caught on the wrong side of that corridor. If you do like to land in bunker I would recommend landing on the high desert side of bunker the one that's a little bit towards the western side of the map. What this will do is allow you to to re-engage and disengage if needed to into the golden sands make your way actually around bunker towards bridges or towards the area that's in between bridges and cascades known as river valley now bunker pass does have high tier loot but i don't think it's as good of a reward for the risk you have to take there are a lot of other high tier loot areas that are safer that allow you to rotate in on places with bunker being so central chances are more often than not you will get rotated on or you'll just find yourself SOL. Now we are at the end, my friends. We have done it. The high tier loot, the mid tier loot, the low tier loot areas. We have covered them all and it is time to talk about my favorite, which I've saved for last. The most central area essentially in the Apex Legends map, Bridges. Now Bridges has two sides to it where you want to play. One side is towards Market where you can retreat into the caves if things go bad. There's a long house and a couple of smaller houses right next to it that connect to a bridge that leads you to the other side towards Hydro Dam. Now Bridges is a great place to end. You can approach this area uh, basically from Repulsor or from Hydro Dam and, and be in this little area called Bridge Valley as you make your way down. This is a very strong way to approach a fight if you're rotating from another area. But if you land in Bridges, the, the key points are finding a house that is uncontested so you can get a weapon like any basic of any landing but if you don't get one of those main houses you can go down to the third house that's at the very bottom this is a lower level house so it's a little riskier because people can rotate onto you and see that you've landed there there's also another way to approach this you can actually start at the top of the watchtower and make your way down there is a small amount of loot so not enough for a full team but if you do that you can have high ground on the fight and maybe if you get a good weapon enough ammo you could try to post some kills, take their loot, and then slowly move across bridges into the other side towards market once you're done. Now, one thing to manage in bridges is when it is time to retreat. There are a lot of different paths. I just explained them to you of where you could start your loot and try to finish. But if things go bad, you need to learn how to slide jump into the balloon, essentially the redeploy that will allow you to take that zip line up without landing in the water, getting too exposed for too long, and then make your way over the top of bridges heading 
getting into cascades. This is a maneuver where you have to look all the way up, you have to then free look down and use W to hold forward and then A and D to adjust your body. It's going to look like you're going to hit the mountain, but you'll actually fly right over it. And that is one of the techniques that you'll see a lot of streamers use. This is the best way to get out of bridges if things are bad. And that's one of the ways to master this area, knowing when you just can't win and you got to go. Decent loop, but more fun than any other location, maybe outside of Skulltown. Bridges is one of my favorite places to land. And I think you'll have a blast learning the ins and outs of avoiding, disengaging, and taking good fights in Apex Legends. You are Already know we got some great videos planned for this week as well i've been trying to put out some very high quality content stuff that will last for a while here on the channel uh, for this game so i really do appreciate everybody showing the amount of support they've been showing and I, I hope it continues as always super grateful for the love and support leave a like if you enjoyed it comment down below if you have something you want to say and of course subscribe that's the best way for me to know that you like what i'm doing and for me to go do more of it as always my friends remember to never give up never stop gaming and i'll see you all next time